Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to be working on a pen uh, Battle 3000. And uh, just uh, came in for a tune up, so I thought I would take it apart, show you how it works, and uh, tell you a little bit about the reel while we're doing that. So, the, uh, the Battle is the third in the Good, Better, Best series of the Pen Pursuit, then the Pen Fierce, and then the Pen Battle. And then you go on to the, the more expensive. Um, specialty reels like the uh, the conquests and the like. So I start uh, by taking the reel apart in general. Uh, the difference between the battle and the fierce for the most part is that the battle uses HT100 drags and the fierce uses a felt drag. So uh, once we uh, take the spool off we're going to take the handle off next. The handle is a screw handle so you just simply reverse or, or uh, wind it clockwise and put that in a parts bin with my other pieces. We set that off to the side and then we're going to take the side plate off. And a side plate is what I call a half side plate. It does not go under the rotor so uh, we can simply remove the bump guard first which uh, spreads both sides of the half case. And these are the ones where you want to use that parts basket because these little screws in particular are uh, annoying if you lose them. Uh, you can't put the pieces back together again. When you take that bump guard off, always make sure that there's not a little tag or something holding it in. Uh, some models will use a little indentation here and slip a tag through there. You just want to make sure that uh, you have that um, coming off easily. Don't try and pry it off. If it's not coming off, it's probably a tag or another clip. In some cases you'll see a, um, a screw comes in from the other side of the handle on the Shimano's for example. Just make sure that uh, if that bump guard's not cooperating with you, uh, go back to the schematic which I always recommend if you don't know what uh, the properties are or the put-togethers are of the reel. Uh, go back to the schematic and check to see if there's not a hidden screw somewhere. A lot of times when you take the cases off there is a fourth screw hiding under the bump guard, not in this one, uh, as this is a smaller reel. This is the 3000 reel. Uh, the 3000 reel is kind of inshore, uh, bays, inlets, rivers, uh, larger fresh water, but uh, it's not really a, a salt water reel to speak of unless it's uh, uh, near shore with um, uh, maybe fluke or that. You know, braid has changed a lot of things. This reel has braid on it. And uh, braid does allow you to go uh, lighten up your tackle on some of the, uh, the salt water stuff. And uh, this could be used for that. But most of the time, this one has been designed for the, uh, uh, the fresh water and near shore. Okay, so we're going to see a, a couple of things on this. We got this one is lube. That's fine. There might be a little bit too much lube in here, but that's okay. Uh, it's been serviced. Ball bearings. Uh, construction. We're going to take that out. I don't think this is one. No, this isn't one. We're going to have to pull the, the shaft in order to take the rest of the gears out. And what we're going to do is clean and lube the bottom half of this and then we'll go on to the, uh, the top. So this is kind of a traditional setup. Like I said, if you opened up a Fierce, Pen Fierce, uh, you would see very similar um, approaches. Uh, the difference being, for the most part, the, uh, the felt washer. I right, we pulled the shaft out by removing that uh, that piece there. Now I'm going to just take the other pieces and parts out. There's three components largely. There's a cross wind block, cross wind gear, and a main gear. And you can see there's a lot of accumulated grease on there. Uh, when the fellow um, brought it, he said there may be too much grease in here, and, and that's okay. Uh, at least he recognized that. We have a ball bearing on the back end. I'm just going to scoop up some of that grease. For the most part, uh, I think this was kind of self-serviced and it, it looks in good condition. So, not a lot to do there other than show you the mechanics behind it and uh, clean up some of the excess grease there and just re-lube. So, there's no problem with this reel, so we don't need to go very far in terms of looking at, uh, at any potential issues here. There is a problem with another one that was brought in. Uh, it's a 2500 and it's grinding, so that sounds like there's some sand or something in the burrings. And uh, I'm going to take a look at that one uh, later. But for now, I thought we would just get this one out of the way to show you the mechanics. Nice reel. Uh, parts are available. That's one of the best things about the pen reels is you can still get the parts for them. 
and um, I'm going to put some new grease on there. I use a, uh, a pen precision reel grease. It happens to be a pen reel I'm working on. Uh, you don't need to use the, the manufacturer's version of the grease. There's a little chunk on the back there too. To um, for the same reels. In other words, you don't need a uh, an Abu grease and a Shimano grease and a and a Iowa grease and everything you know as long as it's a uh, fishing reel grease uh, you're gonna be okay there uh, just make sure that uh, you use that and not an automotive grease or, uh, or something else like Vaseline which I've seen used on reels as well okay and the cross wind block just simply sits right on top of the stud on the cross wind gear and put a little bit of uh, grease on both sides of the shaft of the main gear I'm gonna check the teeth of the main gear they seem to be fine and they're not uh, not clogged in any way. Same thing, I want to check to make sure all the teeth are on the back of that uh, uh, gear that drives the crosswind gear. I'm going to put a little bit of blue grease on the pinion gear here. Just to make sure that it's well lubricated. And then uh, we're going to just put a drop of oil. In this case, I might as well stay with that pen theme. I'll use a pen precision oil. These are available uh, online. All you have to do is simply put in uh, pen precision grease or oil, and you'll get a response. Uh, the supplier I use is pen part, what was penparts.com. It's now uh, Mystic Parts, but uh, mysticparts.com. But uh, you don't have to use them. Uh, it just happens to be convenient. And uh, they have great service, so I have no reason to go elsewhere in terms of trying to find the parts. So I'm taking out the screw, the screw now. And I just dropped the main gear because I wasn't holding it. Grab that. Drop the main gear from the side plate. No harm, no foul. And uh, we'll go up top and we'll take this off. There's a, a collar that holds that uh, cap in place. Uh, the collar is held in by a set screw, which we removed. In this case, this nut is an 11 millimeter uh, nut, and I like it because it's a cap nut. It won't allow you to over tighten when you uh, when you go to reset it with the pinion. And there's a stop collar on the top of that, so you can't screw it down any more than it needs to be, which is another way of saying you can't screw it up, I guess. But uh, and just take those two and put that back in here for now and then we can pull a top assembly and in this case we just have an assembly in here there is an anti-reverse um, bearing underneath and then there's a bearing below that that uh, uh, guides the shaft I always like to take the shaft and see if it moves in this case there's no rock in there so the bearings are solid so all I'm going to do is just put a drop of oil along the side shaft of that bearing uh, of the, uh, I'm sorry, of the pinning gear, let that work its way down to the bearing. The other way I like to do it as well is the bearing is sitting right on top of this pinion shaft here, so I like to grab an oil and just flood that as well. And that's all you need to do on this side. So I noticed that uh, I said no harm, no foul. It did pick up a little bit of something on the floor there, so let's get that off. It looks like there's a little bit of dust or something. That's clean now. All right, so we can go reinstall them. It's that simple. We're going to grab the rotor and put that back on. The rotor is oblong. I'd like to call it rectangular, but it's got a little bit of a, a turn to it. I'm going to grab that cap nut. Now, it can only go on one way because of the collar. This does turn in a uh, traditional righty-tighty kind of a, a way, turning it clockwise. That's why you have that uh, cap, uh, retaining cap with the screw there and uh, you just want to grab that and then we'll just reset the, the holder. I'm going to get that little set screw that came out there. This is why the parts basket works well. Let's just go put that back in. It's a little Phillips head screw. Tighten that down. We'll go back to the bottom of the reel and we'll put the reel back together here. Put the main gear in. Once we put the main gear in, we can go back and put the shaft in. 
That shaft has got a D shape to it. Just need to make sure it's properly mated to the cross wine block, which is what we're attempting to do at the moment. And then you can see it comes through and it'll stop there to some extent. Use a centering pin if it's a little bit of out, out of alignment like this one was. Find that little flathead screw that we had there. And we can put that back on. Then you remember we had the bearing and there was two shims under the bearing on this uh, side plate here. Because the main gear. So the two shims go on the, the gear. Now when that bearing came out, it came out of the side plate. You can uh, put it back either way. Just trying to find my side plate. Isn't that odd? Even the best of us here is it's right in the bucket. <laughs> Silly. All right. Put the bearing on, put a little bit of oil on that bearing there. Turn that around and put that on. And we can go for the three side plate screws followed by the bump guard. And we can go up top to the, uh, the reel. Now, here's an example where the manufacturer does use Loctite on these screws. They use the, uh, the cool Loctite, the blue. Uh, a lot of times I'll say don't use Loctite on a reel, and I mean it. Uh, a, I've seen the red in there, and once you see red on there, uh, you can't get that screw out. And if you can get it out, you, you risk damaging the reel or the thread screws. So I don't recommend using the Loctite at all. I think manufacturers probably throw that stuff on the first time around because they don't want these reels coming back. Uh, during the, the warranty period anyway. So I think that they uh, they overlube the insides of these and I think what they do is they, uh, they put a little drop there just so nothing falls off during the warranty period. After that I guess they could probably care less but uh, right now I know that, uh, that that's what I see. First service you got to break that seal. All right the bump guard goes on followed by the little screw. the operative word here. Put that down. And for most purposes other than just going to go do a drag inspection, this reel is essentially going to be done. With the, the, we got a little bit of fish scales on this. It looks like I'm just going to grab a little piece of steel wool. You can rub them off with that. It's only a rubber handle, so that stuff will come off. There we go. So we know this one's been in the battle, so to speak, being a pen battle. And this one turns counterclockwise in order to make the handle go back on. Kind of weird when you try and do it for the the camera you can't uh, you, you're not as competent as you are when you do it by by yourself there there we go all right I'm just having, my hand is slipping on the grease on this thing You don't want to force anything when you're working on reels. That's a, a problem that you can have that's going to cause you more grief than anything. Just take your time with it. Here we go. One more thing before I leave the service. There is a bearing on here. Uh, folks have asked me to make sure that I oil the bearing, so I will do that. And I just, uh, on the side plates here, it doesn't need oil on the side, but I just generally give it a squirt of WD-40. And just a couple of quick turns just to make sure that stays well. That's the bottom of your reel. Nice smooth operator. Let's just go over quickly to the top. These are HT100 drags, which are fabric drags. They differ, as I mentioned, this is one of the differences between the Battle and the uh, Fierce. The Pen Fierce uses a felt drag. 
A lot of times people upgrade to get the felt drag out of there, although there's no, I haven't seen felt drag failures, but if you're fighting big saltwater fish, it could happen easily. Uh, a lot of major manufacturers use those felt drag systems, and uh, a lot of anglers would prefer the carbon text for that, so they do, uh, they do make the upgrade there, which is okay. All right, I've removed the stack. I'm gonna lay that down and show you how that goes. So you have a the HT100 drag, a metal washer, another drag, another metal washer. The drags get drag grease on them because of the uh, the nature of that being an HT100. I use a Cal's Universal drag grease. You can use others, uh, not a problem. You can use the blue grease if you needed to, but this one's specifically designed for drags. I put a little uh, little bit on there. Work it in with my gloved hand. And before I reinstall, I just make sure I take a cotton swab to uh, get any residual dirt in there. This one's clean. That's not a problem here. So there's indentations here that align. You want to make sure that you put those drag washers into the indentations. That's the only way they're going to go in. Uh, then a metal one. Just want to make sure on the metal ones that they're clean. You don't need to lube metal ones. I'm going to come back and put the the drag grease onto that again a little bit of a thing and work it in with your hands the idea of a drag grease is really to keep the washer flexible it's much more so that than it is to uh, provide any additional drag power or anything like that and then we got that little clip that came into the came out of the groove it goes back into the groove this is a spring so hold it make sure that uh, as you're going to reinstall this thing that sits in the groove and that it doesn't jump out at you. I like to set it from the back first. In other words, get the furthest point into the groove. I use this little pick an awful lot on my, my service desk, as you can tell. And then we can work that down, and then we can work the other side down. And then you make sure that it's uh, sliding in there as it is here. And there's no, nothing here other than that's holding, holding this in place for the drag knob. Okay, we're back there. That goes back on the reel. We have a bearing up here. We can put some oil on as well. And a nice flood. And then we're essentially done with this reel. So that's the, the uh, Pen Battle 3000. From top to bottom, it shows you the gearing system in there. Again, it's the best of the good, better, best between the Pursuit, the Fierce, and the uh, and the Battle. It's a nice smooth operator. It's braid capable. So it's a nice reel to uh, to take fishing with you. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.